So uh, I have the pleasure to uh, give you a brief introduction to the, what will be the next step in the um, best practices pipeline um, that we use. Um, this is indeed actually the, the first step that's actually implemented in the JTK in, the, in, in our framework. And, um, and uh, the location of this step right at the beginning, just after mapping and mark duplicates is not coincidental is because um, uh, it's actually about the first section of, um, of the pipeline is about getting um, the best possible alignment you can, you can have because the tools that go after it assume that the alignment is correct mostly. So um, what this step does is that uh, is to concentrate, try to solve a particular uh, family of artifacts that you can find in alignments uh, quite often is that uh, the mappers have a tendency to, yeah, to uh, the improvement of the mappers, uh, uh, the mappers are kind of good in, in localize the different reads and different sections of the, of the, uh, of the genome, uh, reference genome, but they may have some problems in trying to part, uh, um, accurately map the, uh, the, correspondence between, the, con the correspondence between the uh, reference genome basis and the read basis. I think that this uh, is quite uh, often that uh, this is a particular problem when you have in those in, uh, in, the, in the sample. And there's a tendency for reads that have the, uh, where the in falls towards the end of the, uh, toward the ends of the reads to actually uh, not be properly aligned. Um, so this kind of, uh, of, of artifacts uh, affects the, uh, may affect tools that uh, they assume that actually the mapping to be correct, and this is part, uh, particularly so for the base quality uh, recalibrator that it comes after in the, um, in the pipeline. Uh, but uh, there is maybe some other tools that may not be that affected, like the, um, the haplotype color. That is something that's going to be talked uh, um, uh, tomorrow, that is trying to combine genotyping and realignment at the same time. Um, but it still, it's, it's good to actually fi fi fix these problems. Um, for those tools that actually uh, depend on the alignment to be correct. Um, um, so this is an example that how of these kind of artifacts. In here you have a pileup uh, uh, of a, an example region of the genome. And, and you see here a homopoly number of a thymine. And you can see that the, um, it seems to be that some bridge support the presence of uh, some SNPs uh, right after the homo polynomial, and some other reads uh, support the presence of the, uh, another set of uh, SNPs just before the homo polynomial. And then, um, <clears throat> and then um, the, the, the thing here is that normally the reads that support this, uh, the, the SNPs on that side are the reads that are uh, mapped from this direction to that direction, so yet after the, that uh, repetition. And these are the, the, the reads that support the, the, the SNPs on the other side that are actually go in the other direction. And this is something that you don't really expect. Um, you don't see this, expect to have a dependency between the uh, orientation strand of the reads uh, and the presence of not of uh, SNPs. So it's an indication of a, of a problem. And the actual best explanation for that happening is actually there is it's likely to be uh, actually a deletion in this case um, in the sample and that is, let's say, one less t, and that is because the, the mappers are not able to spot that properly, and they are happy just to put a, f a few mismatches after or before uh, in, the, in the alignment, um, they, 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 they cause the, the artifact. But once you introduce the indel, then the, the, the section of the read that follows or pre precedes the, 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 the indel is properly aligned to the reference. So this is kind of uh, artifacts that the indel realigner is supposed to uh, try to solve. So the principles are, there's two principles to how this works. The first thing is that what you want is to spot the regions that is, is, they are likely to have uh, to show these kind of problems and they are worthwhile to realign. Um, basically because, uh, I mean, there is a lot of data, uh, there is a huge genome in case of the humans, and you don't really want to try to do it uh, uh, in all positions. You want to just concentrate where the, the problem can occur. And uh, you have to use kind of different sources for clues to identify what the regions would be. And obviously, 
you may already know because these present databases out there or your previous uh, data you have some other experiments by like a project by the thousand genomes uh, that there is already some positions where you expect to see in those and that the aligners doesn't know that the aligners uh, the mappers um, are not aware of this information because that would make it more complex but you can add that later on in the indole realigner um, to try to solve the problems that may be caused by indoles. And also you may spot that some reads are actually properly mapped, let's say because the index falls towards the beginning of the read, and if the mapper wouldn't introduce that indel there, it would result in many mismatches. So, uh, so some of the reads actually may have the indels uh, well represented, but not all of them. So you want to solve uh, the problem with the others. And then uh, also maybe you can see other evidence that suggest the presence of an indel, like I showed you before an example, you have suspicious imbalance of a strand, strand bias in the presence of, uh, of uh, some mismatches of SNP, uh, apparently a SNP calls. Um, so this is the third principle, try to find the, the targets that the I was to realign or to look at. Um, to focus on, and then the second is actually the, the realigning. Um, and the, the, the idea is, uh, is to get to w each of these regions one by one and then try to find an alternative consensus sequence uh, looking at the data that make kind of sense and try to then map the different reads to one the reference or so the other consensus uh, sequence or reference, let's say alternative reference, and see whether when you classify the reads in these two uh, groups, the resulting alignment uh, it has a better score. And if that uh, improvement of the score is significant enough, you accept that as a, as a good uh, uh, improvement, and then you take the, and you, you change the, the, the BAM file, um, and so on. So these are two principles, and the protocol follows these two principles. So it's in two steps, uh, or will be two passes through the data um, using two tools, uh, or workers, as uh, Amy was describing before. And the first one is, uh, we call it realign target creator that goes to the data and identifies where the regions that may contain those indels are that uh, may, co cause, uh, may cause problems. And then actually perform the, the realignment, uh, um, apply this algorithm that uh, just really I described. Uh, so the workflow, again, is very, very simple. It's, again, two steps. Uh, the realigner target creator and the in the realigner. The input is the, the input data, perhaps also uh, known, uh, <coughs> maybe previous information you have about known sites. And um, so the first step would take uh, the original data and or the known information of persons of Windows from, uh, from other sources and create this uh, interval file that contains the different targets that you can consider for realigning. Um, so the command uh, looks like, uh, well, as the, I mean, was showing before, this kind of a typical um, uh, JTK command, and so uh, you have the name of the tool here. And then this is very simple, kind of will be the basic set of, uh, of options, like uh, the reference, the original data, if you like, uh, also the known information about the index that is um, uh, conveniently formatted in the VCF, um, and also the, the indicate where the output should go to. And here you have the option to, um, to, in, to, uh, to include the BAM file if you wanted to, to use the information coming from the, align, the, the, the alignment itself in order to identify those targets, like the presence of indels or this, uh, this suspicious mismatch and also, or just the known indels. In that case, you're just gonna, uh, gonna generate targets for around the, the, the indels that have been identified previously. And you can combine both as well. Uh, so um, so no, using the known indels to speed up the processing and, and improve accuracy. So it's always good to have it, but it's not necessarily, uh, if you don't have it, it's, it's still okay, you can go on. Um, so you create the interval file with the targets, and then the, the last step, the second step, is the indel realign itself. That again takes, uh, in this case, you actually have to use the, uh, get the, the original bind file, it's not optional in this case. And you get the, the targets, and you also may use, uh, or may not use, the, 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 the known sites. Um, in, in any case, when, if, 
you use uh, files at the, in the first step, uh, and you use the same files in the second step, you have to make sure they are the same files. So basically, you shouldn't uh, create targets on a different set of samples or PAM files than the ones I normally use uh, for, for, for that you're going to realign. Um, as long as that's consistent, it's okay. And so this is the command line for the second step in the realigner, and this again is a simplified uh, version of the some of the options that you maybe uh, use in order to tune, tune fine, fine tune the, 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 the algorithm. So again, you have the reference there, uh, the original BAM files that you want to change or realign, uh, the known information of in those previously known uh, from not different sources uh, that you may or may not use. And then the targets, of course, that you want to realign, and then the output uh, file, uh, the location of the output file. And so it's different, uh, these um, um, the more options are actually not shown here. One important one is um, there's the, uh, the um, uh, consensus creation mode, or consen well, exactly the option name I don't remember, but um, that you can say whether you want just to use the, um, the known indels, um, and uh, try to realign the reads against those. You also may say that you want to use also information of the presence of indels in the, in the original BAM file. And also, um, as in order to create this consensus sequence. Or you may even go beyond that and actually do a full realignment using the smith um algorithm. That which eventually will be the, the most accurate, but would take quite a long time. So, um, and in... With the time, the, the, the technology is improving, the reads are longer, uh, the liners, the mappers are better, so it might not be uh, is less, less necessary as we, uh, as we move on um, um, in, the, in, in this field, in the, uh, as the NGS analysis improves. But nonetheless, you also have the option there. So you end up with the realign BAM file. Um, so, how the results look like? Well, um, you end up with a BAM file that pretty much is the same data as you, well, you have the same reads anyway as the, the input uh, BAM file. Um, and pretty much most of the alignment, especially those regions that they weren't among the targets for the realigner, are going to just look the same. But for those regions that are part of the, part of the, the targets, uh, some of them would have been realigned. And this is, for example, an example of real data. Um, of uh, uh, in the, well, it's not important with the chromosome, ah, so it's chromosome one and this particular region. And you have uh, the before data here and the top, this is, uh, well, it's kind of the same region, the same data, but this is part of the thousand genomes pilot two data, um, pilot two project. And then this is the, the same data realigned with using high seq I guess this is genome, uh, um, genome analyzer. Uh, but anyway, so it's basically, it's different technology. This technology is more new, I'd say. Uh, longer reads, uh, sorry, longer reads than that one. But still, you can see the, the result in the same kind of predictions. Like, uh, it, it sees like, uh, three different SNPs, which are actually present in, 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 in a database, in DBSNP. And, and so it happens with the better technology. But after uh, applying the realigner, uh, the realign you actually that the, these two SNPs at the beginning, they disappear and they are um, substituted by a, a single event of Indel that is more parsimonious. Uh, um, so this seems to show a better explanation to the data. Um, so it's kind of removed this artifact uh, from the data. And so this, you, you expect to see that in, at least in some of the targets, the region targets that you, you have, the, uh, that the realigner has going into. And so you can see the effects of realigner just looking at the output band file. Uh, by default, the real, in the realigner uh, generates, um, it keeps the, the old cigar that will be the, the, this uh, compressor string that is say how the read uh, aligns to the reference in the output. So you can spot which reads have been changed and how they have been changed. So you can assess, uh, get an estimate of what, how much the realigner has worked. Um, but it's not, unfortunately, it's not, but the realigner itself at that stage, you cannot really say whether everything has been fixed, or how many indels or uh, uh, problems have been fixed from the beginning to, um, from the original BAM file, uh, because it's kind of difficult to say, first of all, where all the indels are. If uh, you, you, you knew that already, that would be, uh, you don't, wouldn't need that much in the realigner by itself. Um, 
But basically, um, you may be able to go downstream when you do the actual genotyping and may uh, say whether the, uh, the real line has done a better job or not. But in that, at, that, at that stage of the, of, the, of, the, of the pipeline, you cannot really uh, assess that, unfortunately. So, um, so the, the thing is that later tools are improving in terms of, you, 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 I mean, again, the technology is improving, the reads are longer, that typically means that the, the mappers have more information in order to, to do a better, a better work. Um, so, um, and also the, the, the mappers themselves are improving. And so the, 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 this problem is, uh, is still present, but it's in, in, at, at a lesser extent. And, um, and also these tools that, that go downstream, in, the, uh, in particular in our pipeline, that actually try to do the genotyping and the, and the realigning at the same time as a part of a single process. And for those tools, the, in the realigning is no longer necessary, but it still is the form, some value for the base quality score recalibration and other tools that don't have this embedded uh, possibility of realigned reads on the fly. And, um, and also there's some other say legacy tools uh, that also requires the, um, the, um, the, the, the mapping to be as accurate as possible. For instance, a unified genotyper that also do indel genotyping that would require the indels to be as accurate as possible. So it still is useful and it's part of the best practices. Um, so that's again the position of the indel real engine in the pipeline and that will be the end of the, this, uh, I think this session. No? Is it not coffee break? <laughs> okay. Thank you. No way. Thank you.